Hmm, dah, the moment you only, dia dah record dah. Dah record dah eh? Tak ada tulis pun record dah. Betul? Atas, oh, ya, ya, ni, 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 ni. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Fatima. Sorry. Okay. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum, Hazika. Dr. Syamsyum. Apa dah ada Ismail Syih? Maaf, saya first time host ni. Semua kau dah best. Ya tunggu yang lain eh. Oh ya, yeah. kita awal lagi. Alright, just uh, connecting the... Uh, Tapi Ismail the... lama dah saya tak nampak doktor. I'm fine, I'm in my room now. How are you doktor? Good, I'm Alhamdulillah, Toib, Toib. Yeah. Uh, doktor di office ya? Eh? Yes, I came... Uh, I've been here uh, for the last, I don't know, one year maybe. Ah, I've been ah, coming oh. to, to the Kulia ah. because of the uh, internet uh, connections. Ah, okay. Because I, my, uh, my house, in terms of the uh, strength of the connection, has not been very good. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, you know, it works fine for, let's say, four or five hours and then suddenly it stops. How's the internet in Tulia? Okay. In Tulia, good because we have installed the uh, state of the art of uh, yeah. Ah, we installed that uh, a couple, couple of years ago. Ah, maybe, okay. maybe two years ago, yeah. Oh, okay. So there's no reason not so to. Because oh yes, we spent a lot of money there. I think uh, almost like hundred and eighty thousand ringgit. Inshallah. for the Tulia or the whole IAUM? No, no, for the Tulia. For the oh, yeah, yes, we use our own our own uh, pocket money. I mean, our own uh, kulia. Uh, they call it uh, trust fund. Ah, oh, mashallah. This was like five years, three, four, five years ago. Oh no, no, no. I think about less than two years. Oh, okay, baru lah. Uh, during, my time, lah. Uh, during my time, lah. During my time, memang memang they started with Prophet Rudin, but uh, during my time, it I really pursued. Ah, this was before, right before pandemic or bila dah start? Um, I think um, about half a year before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, the, you know, students coming from other kulias and trying <laughs> to get access. I'm not joking, this is serious. Okay. I think we spent about 168,000. That's why we can see all these so-called uh, on, on, the, on the roof, I'm sorry, on the ceilings, you know, all this and uh, state of the art. Now, I mean, we not the state of the art, lah. But uh, yeah. But that was before the pandemic, eh? Wow. Oh, before the pandemic, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's why students they enjoy, they really enjoy this the internet uh, connection. Students from engineering, I've seen students from engineering oh. uh, coming to our kulia and getting trying to get access to their speed. Oh. Yeah, oh. but of course there are some culprits, lah, because uh, in oh. the history of our university, there are students leaving the mahala. They know how to, you know, maneuver and stream whatever streaming, mm -hmm. so that they they are the only one who control the gate. Mm -hmm. But uh, I heard they were caught, and you know, certain actions being taken against them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's you know all this technology based, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you are in charge of in any office right now. Oh, no, no, I'm not holding any post. Uh, the only thing that has been given to me because of my term as uh, full fledged uh, permanent staff will, will be until November this year. Okay. In other words, uh, by November will be 60, but uh, I have applied for extensions uh, for, uh -huh. for uh, on contract basis. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. The last time, I think the last time I saw you, <laughs> I was your student. We I know. 2000. I know the qualitative class. Yeah. Yeah, the qualitative class. Yeah. yeah. Get to know you're still around. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the, 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 there are some students. I think. Uh, Professor was my lecturer during my degree years. Yeah, I know. That, Azita, was, in, Azita, yeah. that was in 20, what? The 12? What? 11? Oh. I can't remember, uh, I spent a couple of years, how many years? Five years, five years, right? Yeah. Yeah, PhD, yeah. Yes, sir, doctor. I got uh, students, some of my students, you know, in Uganda in particular, 
and uh, in Maldives and so on. They they are actually the deans now. Uh, the one in Uganda is a dean. She's a lady. Oh, she's a, she, she, she's a dean. Uh, Islam, International Islamic University in Uganda. And uh, we have been uh, having a kind of a MOA between, the, just in case for those of you who do not know about this, we have an MOA with uh, International Islamic University in Uganda. I've seen the picture. Yeah, the, the task is actually to help them to develop their very first batch of PhD candidates. Mm. They, they, they tried to uh, offer the program through their ministry, but was turned down. Not until when they collaborate with us, you know, and uh, in, a, in a way, IIUM is supporting them in terms of technicality, content and whatnot. Then they got approval from their ministry. Okay. So this is... Uh, you know, a great honor to, to our Kuliah to support them until they produce the very first batch. And now they are in the second year, you know, the students. Uh, I think there are, are, are about two or three batch, uh, batches already, or batches, sorry. So the first one is the one that we are help, trying our best to help them to get their, their, their first so-called uh, babies. Nah. Yeah. This was uh, Bina? It started uh, a year before the pandemic, uh -huh. 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, 2018. Yeah. Dr. Susanna, how are you? <laughs> are you I'm fine. Room? I'm fine, Prof. Because your background as if that you are in your room. No, that's my picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can be a decoy, you know. <laughs> yeah. It can mm, be a yes, secret bro. duck, yeah. You are, oh, you are in campus, bro. Yeah, in my room, yeah. All right. All right. Mm. This is about, about uh, what, uh, not wait now, it's about the uh, uh, micro credential because I, I contacted the the new boss of CPD, all right, and uh, I think I promised her to come up with uh, some kind of uh, uh, versions or out of my course or courses, so that it can be shared, you know, uh, not only to our Kulia but uh, perhaps uh, beyond the university. But uh, I have not done so because I'm already packed with so many things. But I will try my best to uh, to develop that. Because there are so few things that I want to develop. One is about the association, qualitative association for the university, and then uh, try, uh, trying to develop a software. You know, uh, I think uh, the software can be uh, linked with uh, the available uh, uh, tafsir or hadith regarding the themes. And let's say you generate generate a series of themes, right? Mm -hmm. So when you uh, identify that particular theme, you just uh, link that theme with uh, the sources coming from Hadith and Quran, you know. Yeah. So then they're narrated by whom and uh, been explained in detail in terms of and so on and so on. That will help students a lot uh, when it comes to uh, the elements of uh, IOK, Islamization of Knowledge. So um, it has not been uh, done, it started but stopped somewhere along the line, but I need to come back and create that thing. So, in fact, we can do the same thing for the existing uh, softwares. Uh, I think we got about, uh, we have about 16 different softwares qualitatively. Right? And uh, the most two popular softwares happen to be uh, Atlas DI and Envivo. Mm, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Aisha, how are you? I have not seen you for quite some time, Dr. Aisha. Waalaikumsalam uh, warahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. How are yes. you, Prof? Good, Alhamdulillah. Thay, thay. Alhamdulillah. Prof, uh, if you don't mind, it's uh, 10.01 now. Shall yes, I? yes, by all means, please, yes. Thank you, Prof. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Nian. Salam. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And Dr. Shamshul? Ada, 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 ada. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I think uh, there's not too much to say. Cuma terima kasih banyak for being here uh, to listen to Dr. Shamshul, our head of uh, micro credential unit, okay, to brief us on the what is micro credential. Okay, uh, it's going. I mean, I've I've uh, 
seen you giving the briefing a few times, uh, Dr. Shamshol, and I was I can see that it is very clear. You know, memang you jenis orang yang memang boleh explain <laughs> almost the whole thing within that one hour, insyaAllah. Uh, yeah. We will have like one hour session listening to you. And but, but, but Dr. Samson needs to uh, show his image. Eh, ada gambar eh? Oh, tak, saya ingat kan ah, saya buka kamera. Not... Ah, faham takutlah pun. Saya buka dah kamera. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yang saya dah buka kamera. Thank you so much for your time, okay? To brief us. Um, so, shall we start with uh, Al-Fatihah? Okay. Okay, with that, Dr. Shamshul, the platform is yours, I would say. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much uh, to everybody. Uh, I know that this is, I think this will be my almost last, uh, this is the last kuliah that I will cover, inshallah. So I've covered the rest of the kuliah and for that, I supposed to be one of the earlier, slightly earlier. So, however, because of my schedule, I need to postpone it to one of the last kuliah lah. So the yes. next one will be, huh? That's the irony, Dr. Shamshul. Ah, tu lah. So the mm, next. Pilih kasih ni. Ah, ni pilih kasih ni. Mm. So the next, the next kuliah, the, the next one we all be covering apa ni lah, SASMEC lah, SASMEC. Ah, uh, apa the hospital lah, huh? So and then uh, we are done for the briefing. Tapi itulah nanti at the end of this kita plan satu uh, open micro credential day for personal development lah. Because what we see yang kita nampak lah, sebelum saya bagi briefing sebelum kita nampak uh, we somehow somehow I I think some of the academics uh, and apa ni support staff uh, technical staff and admin staff are in uh, the kuliah as well. So, but somehow we are not able to capture kata, I know that it's an irony telling this to, to co-ed lah eh, sebenarnya. <laughs> being, being an education punya kuliah. But somehow we are not able to capture, probably from the from the way I give briefing, uh, I'm not able to capture saying that these micro-credential are not only for academic courses, it's also for professional and personal development courses. Meaning that whatever... Uh, skills that you have on top of the academic uh, academic that we do uh, for the academics, we could actually do that as well for other personal development. Lah. If we are skilled at Paranum, probably have one. Skill at Nasheed, probably we could have one and so on. Lah. Huh? So that's, that, that, that's where we are trying to actually put forward. Lah. Huh? And probably because of the way we are proposing the, apa ni? Anta, the proposal is also reducing the insight untuk the uh, personal development but somehow based on the micro credential meeting last uh, i think last week yeah sebenarnya huh? so we change it so that the personal whoever so we change it in such a way that whoever wants to learn uh, before i start off the micro credential uh, whoever wants to learn on how to develop micro credential they could actually do that uh, slightly with ease lah because one is uh, for personal development only, yeah, kita tak cover untuk academic and professional because we feel that that one needs to be controlled to make sure that people know what they are trying to do earlier in this stage. Yeah. But at least for professional, for personal development, uh, the one, anything that you feel that you want to do, you could actually think about it. I mean, we could open up the website later on. Yeah. Uh, think about it. Uh, who are the learner? What type, What do you want them to? Uh, what What do you want to share? And what are the content? What are your title and so on? And then just present it to micro credential committee without preparing anything. Maknanya except for the slide lah, for sure. Huh? Kalau you buat slide to dua page, dua 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 line, dua line lah. Huh? Uh, I mean dua slide, dua slide lah. Huh? So so that is where we are we are moving on uh, into to help. Uh, creators as much as possible to learn on building micro credential module. I think that is where it is. So if people ask me, where should well, if people when when ask me, where should I start if I want to build a micro credential module? Contohnya, so then we do on why and so on. Where should I start? I would propose really personal development module. Whatever you feel that you want to do it. 
uh, four hours and that's it. So that's a, that's the smallest module that we could build. Meaning, and then the best part about it nowadays is after meeting last week is you don't even need to prepare anything except for the slides that you want to present. That's it. So that is the that is the the, the way that we are trying to facilitate to, to, to start the process rolling, yeah? to start the ball rolling. Meaning that if you want to build micro credential, prepare one or two slides, uh, have all the contents ready, or if you feel that the slides are not really in tune, at least have one to show what the title and things are all about so that we know who it is and what title is it. And then later on, once the uh, micro credential committee are there, yeah? micro commission micro credential committee already approved your proposal, for example, then we also develop uh, a series of this one, we already arranged, the unit already arranged, a series of uh, tutorials. I put it, sign up in your workshop, but then it'll be like a, a different term. Eh? This one, a series of tutorials that is happening every week, huh? but different team. Meaning that the first week is on the initial proposal, second week, full proposal, third week on the content development and so on. So we're gonna have that on a weekly basis, depending. So at least on a monthly basis, you have that tutorial. If you're not, if you're not so sure about what I will present later on, because the forms are complicated, contohnya, or because the, but the, the, the sum of the content, you're not so sure, then join us. We will be having weekly tutorial. Kita buat macam, uh, really want to help. Uh. We, we make it a weekly tutorial so that at least all the questions that is burning question, uh, I, I would say that some say that they suffer alone, that, but this time we want to actually help. We want to engage, we want to help what we actually do to, to make it easy for all the creators to actually build the micro-credential module. Huh? So I think that one will be the, the starting point of how we already started there by the early summer March when I took office, March this year. Huh? Uh, took office meaning that that's where the whole thing is developed. Lah. Maksudnya the first head there is me. Huh? So from there, we, we, we slightly change um, three and then less and then so on because of, the only thing is academic, we're still maintaining to make sure that that the gist is there because uh, accreditation is there and so on. But professional and personal development is slightly quite relaxed in a bit. Uh, personal development for sure is very relaxed. We are, we are trying to do that as much as possible. Yeah? But the gist of the, all the information, we are using the same form, but we are going to have more engaged session with everybody through our tutorial, which we already arranged. Yeah? So if you are around, then just... If anybody needs help, just go in. We're going to pass the link inside my credential uh, website. There's events there. You could see. Just click in there, get the Zoom link, and so on. Huh? So just go in. So I'll be there if people uh, need any help. So before we go any further, so I just like to, I mean, I, I love to actually introduce this part uh, to make it easy for everybody, which is, uh, boleh tolong share, boleh bagi saya, saya tolong share screen tak? Oh, eh. Yes, sekejap. Eh. Ah, boleh bagi saya tolong share screen tak? Uh, okay. Is it done? Sekejap. Share. Okay. So, I want to share my... Uh, mana dia punya... Uh, okay, one more slide. Share screen. Share. Okay, now screen. Okay, this one. Okay, I want to share the screen. Eh? So this is this is I I hope everybody could see eh, before we start nanti because I I'm trying to reduce uh the 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 the, the, the thought process inside our mind. That's why I'm introducing all this before I present. Eh? because. If not, then people still keep asking where can I get the website, where is the website, and so all the questions that I answered earlier, so that when we do the briefing, is mainly just the briefing on the briefing sahaja lah, tak ada tak ada persoalan yang lain yang terbuku di hati ya. So if you are asking about, if you are worried about all the information that will come in, all the informations are here inside the website, sites.google.com, iumdu.my, microcredential. 
So all the informations are here. So anything that I talk, anything that I talk today, will will be here. Will be in this website. Huh? It's just that when I go to or uh, when the unit goes to every single KCDIM, we are trying to tailor made or fine tune uh, the Q and A, the presentation, and those things so that it covers the kuliah need itself. I think that is the the main purpose. But if it is a general questions, so all the questions will be in this website. Uh, if we were to start, we could have start here and all the process flow up until the status of the micro credential are actually here. Huh? Status of the micro credential are actually here. And then you're asking about whether what are the resources, all the resources are here, the events are here, when is the next submission? If we were to ask when is the next submission, the next submission is on the 15th of October. So submission deadline is on the 11th of October. So a few more weeks. Yeah. So, and then these are about MCLO, still needs to be updated because we are uh, just endorsed a few more in the list. Every single general FAQ, eh, every single general FAQ that I have come in during my briefing. Yeah? So, all of those are here. And generally, this is where they think it comes in sequence. Ah. So, if there are any additional soalan they would call at, they'll be down there. So, maknanya... Uh, the first one is from different kulia, and then that thing moving slowly. Some private briefing. This is where it is lah. So any repeated question, I won't cover lah. Sebenarnya, huh? any repeated question, I won't cover. So generally, you could see that is a question. Those are some of the answers on FAQ that I gave, and then these are the updates that I said uh, about the new procedure for personal development. Huh? So all the all the things or all the resources that you could actually imagine to build the micro-credential is here. And then if you ask about the platform, then the platform is here. Huh? Micro-credential at UM, the edu, the MY. So this is where the platform is. And then you could actually click here to register, login with, uh, with Google. Or if you don't want to use Google, you could use your Microsoft login, lah. either Google login or Microsoft login. So just a one-time sign, sign up, and you are on to the platform huh? as a creator. Lah. As a creator or as a user, doesn't matter. So I would suggest uh, for IUM staff, uh, uh, I mean, if you want to have your personal account as a uh, learner, it's fine. But as a creator, we would suggest, really suggest to use IUM account so that we could actually track. And so that it actually linked to later on if you were to actually have revenue sharing and so on. Uh, so to have your IUM account. So the rest, just go through this. Uh, uh. So we have few categories there. That one we'll cover later on what does it mean. Uh, uh. So with that, probably I just cover what micro-credential is all about. Huh? So what micro-credential is all about. Uh, okay, there you are. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Huh? Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. So the big orange there? Huh? Yes. Okay, you can see the big orange there. So that one is uh, my introduction. So this is the last, uh, since this is the last uh, visit untuk KC, uh, Kulia. Huh? So, and then KL and Kuantan, lah, except for hospital. So this is where I start to gather uh, where, how should I explain my credential. And then somehow it turned out that uh, it turned out that this is during Ramadan. So the first workshop that we did, we start with the orange. Yeah? So... I know that it's, a, it's the wrong type of fruit probably to start during Ramadan because uh, probably I'm hungry at that time. Huh? So uh, in that essence, uh, this uh, orange itself explains a very good lot of what micro-credential is all about. Huh? So because if we, were to, if we were to put it as the single orange as our cause, huh? if, if the single orange is our cause, in our program, and you could see there's a lot of oranges there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think about six. Must have the half orange there. So about seven, uh, seven oranges there. We could actually assume that the seven oranges there that you could see there is our program, and that one orange that already been peeled there is actually the, uh, not not the half one, but already been peeled there is actually one of our costs. Huh? So, and then we see, we're going to see later on, well, how does this relate to micro credential? So, but imagine that one big orange there, one single orange there, is a cost in our program. It's a three credit hour cost, four credit hour cost, and so on. 
and the rest of the orange there are the forces that is within our program. So I think that is the main elements that we need to actually start on when we talk about micro credential. Huh? So the orange is there. But why, why we're talking about micro credential is because of this. Huh? So when we start to talk about Ghana for top strategic technology tanks for 2021, we could actually see that uh, through to 2023, 40% of organization will blend virtual and physical experiences. So imagine when we were to actually move, now we already do a virtual experiences. And even till date, uh, to date, even though we are already opening up 60% of our offices, 60% uh, of staff goes to office, uh, that's the government regulation now, 60% uh, will go to the office. We are still running most probably about 40, 50, or even 60 to 80% of our um, meetings or physical experiences through virtual, because the COVID are still not there. And even, we could imagine, even if the COVID is out, uh, so we already, is part of the endemic, uh, it's part of the society that is there, it's like a, a normal flu, I would say. So even if it's there, then uh, people will not suddenly stop moving into virtual experiences. So, the virtual experience will still be there. The Zoom will still be there. The Google Meet will still be there. And so does the WebEx, the, what is that, the, one, the Microsoft Teams and so on. They'll always be there because of the convenience. Because now, uh, inter-organization, you have different, uh, assuming the organization have multiple uh, branches, could actually start to do all this meeting without going into the site we could actually have a lot of interaction more eh, uh, by doing it virtually. So not only that, like you could imagine now, once this become a new norm, then everybody will start to learn even virtually. Now people already start to learn through uh, YouTube, they already start to learn through podcasts. However, those type of uh, platforms, I would say, like YouTube, podcasts, and so on, doesn't give them the credential that people need. I think that is a key element there because when we see through YouTube, we may be skilled learning from YouTube. However, nobody say the YouTube provider, I mean the YouTube provider or those who build the YouTube or create the content for YouTube won't actually come and say, thank you very much. You are now as good as I am. No, no credential is being given there through YouTube. Even, I mean, same thing with podcasts. Because this is sort of one way. It's like, a, it's like a television or it's like a radio type of journey. So I tell you, these are the knowledge you learn and that's it. Huh? It's a one way type of communication in, in, in a sense, except for we writing through the comments saying that could you help me on this and they may reply or they may not. So depending on because they, I mean, YouTube uh, uh, content creators are not obliged to uh, respond to any of whatever they are created. Huh? So as well as the podcast. Lah. So I think these are the key elements when we talk about micro-credential. Huh? So next is when we talk about the technology trends for 2021, we are talking about people centricity, location independence, and resilient delivery. So imagine that when we talk about people centricity, yeah, internet of behaviors have become part of our life. Huh? So this is where the likes of Google, the likes of Google, Facebook, Apple, Amazon is become very powerful. For a simple reason, I mean now Shopee, Lazada, and so the Shopee, Lazada, and now Grab lah, huh, become so powerful because they could actually know every single step of your behavior or my behavior or our behavior. So by the time you click, you're searching for a product through Google that particular thing will actually be distributed across the whole platform. You're going to see advertisement on that product in, when you are visiting Grab. You're going to see the advertisement when you're visiting another platform, when you're visiting another platform, when you're visiting another platform, when you're visiting another platform. And if you were to do any purchasing through Facebook, that one is, ex, is the what you call targeted marketing to the extreme. We could actually target uh, in terms of technology trend, we could even target who we want our marketing to be to the exact age through Facebook, uh, to the exact age, to the exact gender, to the exact type of work they do, to the type of 
lifestyle that they are. I mean, that is what internet of behaviors are. Huh? So, but I'm not talking about the general internet of behaviors. That one is what just now. But we are talking about internet of behaviors for our students. Yeah? Imagine through micro credential, even through Italian, even through some other some of the learning platform, we could actually identify which of our students or learner who actually visited the video once, twice, three times. Where the video starts, where the video stops. Why do they stop at this video? Why do they stop at this particular location? And so on and so on. Eh? So we could actually see how many times they log in per day, how many times they log in uh, per semester, and then how many times they try different, different activities inside the micro-credential platform. How many times they do certain things. Eh? So imagine those are the internet behaviors that are uh, available for us to study. So I link that again to, Net, uh, to Netflix. Eh? So why Netflix is a very powerful company, eh? it's not as much as the thing that they sell, that you, you, you see the one that they sell, which is the Netflix videos, uh, we, we, we binge it for one hour, two, binge, it, binge, uh, binge video eh? for one hour, two hour, three hours. That is, not the, that is not where the money comes in. So that's Spotify, that is not the, where the money comes in. The money comes in because of the data. Eh? So, for Spotify and for Netflix, they know when you start the video, when you stop the video, which part of the video you skip, which are the next video that you see, as well as for Spotify, which song that you skip, where do you stop your, 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 your song, and so on. All those are oil for marketing, and all those are oil for the producers. Huh? So because now we could actually use that data to change the behavior of whoever that we want. This is where it is important as a creator, as an instructor, and as an academic, as a teacher, to start learning the internet of behaviors of our students huh? or our learners. Because from there, we could actually intervene anywhere we want, anytime we like, and whatever that they do. Huh? So if they didn't actually open up the video at all, we say that, why you open up your video only once? Why you don't do it twice? How are you going to learn if just one time you only see 10 seconds of the video? That is part of the intervention that we could do on internet of behavior. When we talk about in, uh, location independence, huh? when we talk about location independence, we talk about anywhere operation, where we could actually, the learners could learn from anywhere, anytime. Huh? Huh? So, and then when we talk about resilience, we talk about hyper automation, where things could be done automatically. Huh? Attendance could be taken automatically and so on. Huh? So next, we talk about sustaining innovation. Eh? When we talk about sustaining innovation, we talk about focus on the existing market, improvement of existing market, and market predictable. Well, this is what we are doing now. Eh? Our on-campus teaching and our on-campus mode of delivery. When we talk about disruptive innovation, it's actually create a new market. Innovation, dynamic, game-changing, it's unpredictable. Eh? So that is where the disruptive innovation is. This is where micro credential is currently. So there are two types of mode of delivery when we are talking about one sustaining innovation on campus, in campus that we're having now. Now the one is the disruptive innovation, which is micro credential. So you can see those two are, one is focus on existing, one create new market. One is improvement in existing product, one is innovation, uh, innovation dynamic and game changing. One is predictable, one is unpredictable. For a simple reason, uh, imagine uh, whatever micro credential that creators are being built in, Assuming that we have an academic micro-credential with our bucket into 10 different small modules, and we talk only one module, uh, four hours, five hours, 10 hours of that particular module, uh, because we break it down for 120 hours. Uh, so 10 hours of that particular module. And we sell that module itself. The market is unpredictable because last time we know that we know that, that particular module, for example, research, uh, we know that that particular total module will only be taken by master student or PhD student the most. But now when we broken down research methodology, it could be learned by not only master student or PhD student, the same course, if we do it well, it could be learned by everybody in the world who wants to do research, if we do it well. So anybody in the world who feels that I want to research, I mean, journalists, if they feel that what are the best way of, for me to learn how to do research, micro-credential or research methodology. Uh, and then if lawyer were to actually do that, what is the best way? Micro-credential and research methodology. 
And then if we were to have uh, any other type of work uh, that are managers or even the CEO think about, I want to do research on how to improve my uh, company uh, in the long run. So how would, what type of research could I do? They could actually go into research, uh, micro-credential uh, in research methodology. So that could be one, but not the, but depending on how we build, so the market could be unpredictable. It could be anybody. Uh, so that is where the innovation is come in. So, and then put it, put it as well that the world out there is different and things are changing. So people need to start to upskill, reskill, or they will be out of skill. Not only them, us as well. Because for us, if we were to not upskill, reskill ourselves, that for sure we'll be out of skill. Because the market are changing, the way things work uh, are changing, and the new norm are actually a new norm. Huh? So, Things are changing. And imagine the disruption actually comes on all starting from the invention of the internet. We have different, different disruption. For example, internet, social, mobile, up until super artificial intelligence, for example. So, and then we, we talk about disruptive innovation in education is already started. So we have last time, as I said, a camera moving into mobile and Britannica now moving into Wikipedia. I mean, those um, probably young the young generation won't actually even see britannica probably and though it, i mean for young like for our student they may not even know blockbuster eh? huh? so but now moving into netflix and taxi into uber or grab huh? so but that one is the disruptive technology that we see there but the disruptive technology in education is already here huh? imagine check already disrupted our final exam huh? we no longer uh, because of the, the pandemic, eh? imagine because of the pandemic, because we are doing online, we no longer could create an exam which uh, could be circumvented by, uh, by chat. So somehow the exam question needs to actually start to change. That is what the disruptive innovation are. And then the creative life about Edo, guilt education, and then we have languages, Duolingo and Rosetta. Huh? We have Coursera, part of micro credential. We have Kahoot now, as well as Go Guardian for proctored exam. So, and masterclass for skill. Yeah, I think uh, most of us have heard uh, the Iklan masterclass over and over again in different sites, uh, uh, Instagram like, and so on. They keep on giving the uh, masterclass uh, advertisement. Uh. So, and top five trends that will disrupt education, uh, that disrupt education in 2020 and beyond. One is more personalized education and then more data driven. This is where I talk about just now uh, about uh, the insight, uh, data insight. This is the data insight that we talked about just now where the internet of behaviors is there. So what are the people doing? How long they spend on certain things? All those are actually data driven insight. So we could actually see individual students, how they actually learn, what are they doing and so on and so on and so on how long did they spend for certain item and so on. So, and then with that, with that, imagine that we could actually intervene. We could actually help individualized students if we want to. It depends on us at the end. So, and then the next one, more accessible education. So education on the fingertips, more automation online, online tool for tracking. So now we could actually have attendance to be automatically taken. We could actually have a lot of items to be automated. The quiz could be automated if you want. Huh? So, and then VR, AR, more immersive education, a more immersive education if we were to build that. So that if, for example, if, for example, in, uh, in COAD, in COAD, since it is under teaching, so we could actually develop a more immersive education through micro credential if you want, huh? through micro credential if you want, on having how to actually. Uh, how to actually respond to students, how to actually respond to our uh, school teachers, how do they respond to kindergarten students, to primary, secondary students, using a VR or AR technique uh, in micro-credential, meaning that we give them a, we give them a scenario, uh, we develop a video, which an interactive video, so that they could actually immerse in that particular interaction uh, with the experiential learning that they could actually do with the actual one, with the actual video, with the actual type of how we could actually do the interaction, eh? the AR, VR. So that one is possible. We could actually do that. Eh? Maybe we could even do that in class effectively. So five ways that tech is democratizing education. 
the best educators in the world are now available to everyone. Imagine eh, now, with micro credential, I mean micro credential, I tell, I, I, we could actually give you a scenario like this. With micro credential, best educators are available to everyone for a simple reason. Eh? MQA allow, MQA allow, even now, even now, uh, MQA allow, even now, UIA allows, eh? UIA allow, MQA allow, huh? uh, even the Kulia, if they want to, huh? because now it's subject to Kulia, huh? uh, want to, we could actually allow up until, up until, based on the credit transfer that we have, huh? up until 75%, if I'm not mistaken, huh? uh, we could actually allow 70% of the learning that we have uh, through micro credential to be taken outside of UIA. Meaning that our student, if we were to allow, we could even allow our student, it's just that, it's just that whether the Kulia want to give it or not, we could allow our student, if we want to give the best education to them, we could allow them to take micro credential from Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, uh, Oxford, Harvard, Cambridge, and then some other universities across the globe, probably. Uh, uh, some other micro credential across the globe eh, that you give them up until 70 percent. So they credit transfer 70 percent of their micro credential to UIA, and UIA need to say, assuming that uh, we use the current current credit transfer is 35 percent eh, at uh, 25. Eh? So uh, assuming that 35, you allow until 35 percent, 30 percent, 30 percent need to be from UIA, 70 percent to be outside. So they could get a micro credential, they could get a degree from UIA with 70% of the content being from outside of UIA. It is possible to do that with our current credit transfer policy. But whether we want to do that or to do that or not, it depends on the policy of every single kuliah. Huh? But it is possible to do that, meaning that we could actually democratize our education and get our learner, our learner, our student to learn from the best of the world. But then the issue is now how we want to do that reciprocal agreement among the rest of the the rest of the university that is one or how are we going to have that particular arrangement? So I think that is the that is the criteria that probably the MCLO could start thinking lah if they were to actually go into that road. Huh? So but it all depends on what are the kuliah strategy. Huh? So the next one is student can easily assess personalized assessment and feedback. Imagine now. Huh? With the micro credential, uh, with the disruptive technology at tech, uh, student could assess personalized assessment and feedback. Uh. So meaning that uh, last time, uh, if we were to have 100 people in class, 100 people in class or 200 in class without uh, uh, Padlet, for example, without Padlet, uh, I give uh, uh, a penny at tech, uh, without Padlet, then one of the thing is we engage, we lecture, and that's it. It's difficult for us to interact with 200 of our students. However, with the education technology, eh, with Padlet, we could actually engage two, with 200 of our students. Eh? We give the lecture, we actually put in the Padlet, and they could actually respond. 200 could actually respond to us. And we could actually give a personalized assessment and feedback to them if we want to. Eh? The only time now is, is more time for them lecturers to spend with 200 students. I think that's the only downside on our side. But on the student side, they could actually get personalized assessment from you. They could, every single student, 200 of them, could actually start to talk to us and get assessment and get qualitative or even quantitative assessment if you want. So at that improve quality of interaction, this is where it links to together. So they could actually interact with us. And last one, knowledge information available for free or at low cost. And students can assess communities or experts. That links to the first one, huh? the best educators. So they could actually get communities or experts through at that huh? with micro credential. So, but yes, that's why I put the picture of two guys, uh, no, uh, the guys and the girls here that see moving forward there. Huh? So because as in anything new, it's scary. It's something new. People are not so sure what to do, and then. Uh, if some are complaining and come back to me, the forms are extended, it's a lot, we are not so sure what to fill up and so on, because it's new, because it's destructive, of course. Huh? When we go into marriage, we go with a leap of faith. Huh? So that's when we talk about micro-credential, 
I hope that every single one of us, including me, could go into the leap of faith that this thing will actually follow through. And this is where the future technology will come. And this is where all the learners will actually move in the future. So we need to take it with a leap of faith. This is the first day of our, of our I, I won't call it marriage together, of our relationship together in building the micro-credential. Huh? So let's see where we go in five years, 10 years, 15 years down the road and so on, huh? inshallah. So with that, uh, when we talk about MC, then it becomes one light bulb that are uh, compared to the rest, which is not lighting. Why? Because MC are different. It's a new mode of delivery. It's not the standard mode of delivery that we have in face-to-face. -face. It's a new mode of delivery. So of course, it's this different. Of course, there's a lot of things that needs to be learned. And of course, there are a lot of alignment that needs to be arranged from our face-to-face -face into a self-paced, self-learned type of processes. Huh? So that is why that is different. So if the rest are not lighting, we are the one that is, that is light up. So with that, when we talk about professional, huh, we, talk, we, we, are, we are having about 76% of our professionals huh, wish there was a way for employers to actually verify their skills so that they stand out among other candidates. I think this is key. Huh? because. It means here that almost 80% of the professional want the employer to verify their skill. So they want to actually learn from a platform that could actually give them credentials. Not to learn from a platform like YouTube or podcast that they learn and then nobody can verify their skill and nobody could verify the credential. Because once somebody could verify the credential or skill, then they stand out among other candidates. I think that is, the, that is where micro-credential plays a very big role. Huh? Because we not only give them the knowledge that they need, the information that they need, we verify that their skill and knowledge are there. Huh? So that is the key elements where professional needs them. Huh? So they want something that they could actually verify. And micro-credential is doing that job. Micro-credential is the one that could actually verify saying that, you have learned this skill or research methodology, and I acknowledge that you actually learned that. Huh? So YouTube could do the same thing, but YouTube could not verify that particular skill. Huh? So at the end of the day, they could actually stand out. So next is, I'll talk this about uh, this one guy here. Uh, this is Ame. I just want to make it alive for, for everybody to imagine. Eh? Assuming this is Ame, huh? this is Ame. So what Ame wants is he wants a flexible education. Huh? He wants education that is not bogged down to a single locality, not bogged down to a single location. Huh? This is what the new millennials are talking about. This is the, this is the new where the, where the new generation is trying to move to. Huh? They want a flexible education. They want it to learn from the masters. Huh? They want to learn from people who are skilled in their areas. So, but they want it to be flexible. They want it to do whatever they want, whenever they want. And imagine why all this thing, all the one to all this content is there is because Ame is a digital native. And Ame have always getting everything in an instant. Their life process are all designed through instant gratification. So that is the issue somehow. I mean, if we were to solve the instant gratification issue is because they are born in that way. They are born with having the, the every information to come in at an instant. They have their PC to be there. They have their tablet to be there. They have everything come in conveniently to them when they start to, well, well, I mean, since they are young. So they want everything to be flexible. They want it now. They want faster competency. I want it now. I want to learn now. I want to, to have all the information now. Huh? Faster competency, meaning that, if they are working now, this generation are working now, huh? they want to learn and then their boss asks them, you need to actually learn about A, B, C. Huh? They want to find out the micro-credential, how should I learn this? And I want to know only that content, not the rest of it. I want to know A, B, C and A, B, C only and get the competency. That is what I want. The rest of it, I'll figure out later. So that is where all this compartmentalized comes in. Now, the one is bite-sized and personalized. So this is where... The small bit is what they want, and it needs to be personalized to them. They want it the time they need, whenever it is, the time they want, and at bite size, meaning that a small, small part chunk. 
not in a four hour de- four four hour degree pula four years degree one year eh apa ni five days uh, short short courses not in that kind of that kind they want it in such a way that they learn now and then continue learn now and continue learn now and continue uh, and then probably spend 10 15 minutes to learn that do some other work and coming back because because the, the thing is uh the attention span is short therefore the the bite size and personalized is important huh? so now the one is convenient dynamic affordable and demand driven of course that is what i may want in that case huh? so in term of micro credential in term of learning nowadays no convenient dynamic meaning that where there where, whenever there is a change in the in the knowledge then it needs to be updated because He don't want it to be in such a way that oh this is an old knowledge. You are have you learned something new? Because now information are the fingertips. So information are the fingertips. Therefore, the micro credential that we give or the knowledge that we give to them need to be updated as soon as it is it is being updated. So I think that is one of the one of the key elements, huh? Affordable and demand driven. Then another one, another two. So tools for educators, we have personalized, customized surface, and then we have Gen Z, millennials, digital native, use of analytics, tool for educators, include digital and modern tools, as well as information everywhere. So since all this information everywhere, our task mainly is to facilitate their thought process. So how can we have the learning outcome that they need to actually have? So how can we facilitate those so that the learning outcome are being achieved? So how we could actually facilitate their knowledge, facilitate where they get their knowledge and so on. Huh? So next is we talk about uh, what do you call it, past to future and then the present, huh? lifelong learning and lifewide learning. So we talk about what are the thing. Micro credential is a lifelong learning, meaning that we could actually put it from now up until they die, as well as the lifewide learning, meaning that the for their formal education, their work. Yeah, CPD point for professional bodies. Yeah, family. What could we do to help them? Probably parenting, their interest, hobby, probably fishing, and some others. Huh? So, uh, some others could be. I mean, if you want to put religious uh, or some other things, is that huh? it could be formal education, work, family, interest, hobby, and others. So all those are actually there. Huh? So we could actually have that. Huh? So now we talk about the oranges now. Huh? So when we talk, uh, when now we are going to talk about the dynamics of the MC lah. So just now is the why itself lah. Now the dynamics of the MC. Eh? So what MC is all about is if you could imagine that one orange there, eh? one big orange there is a course in micro, is a course in our program. Eh? So in the course of our program probably EDU one thousand one, eh? EDU EDU one thousand one. So. The micro credential is just a small peel of orange, huh? The small peel of orange, huh? So that small peel of orange that you could see, there's two peel there, there's two peel there on uh, on the on the skin, huh? So small peel of orange, huh? So those are two modules of micro credential, and if we were to break it down, the smallest size that we could build is four hours. So those could be four hours and four hours of micro credential. So there's two modules there already. And imagine, huh? Because Uh, this thing link. Uh, if we were to build a micro credential, uh, academic micro credential, uh, so meaning that we could actually have this big orange now, this big orange now, and then peel it slowly, peel it slowly, remove the skin, uh, remove the skin, and you could see that orange there, only the content of it, uh, the content of the gist of it. Uh. So and then now you peel it down into small pieces, and every piece is a micro credential. That is what micro credential is all about. The bite size that we could actually eat. I mean, it's difficult to eat to eat the whole orange, but it's easier to eat one peel of orange. So micro credential is about that bite size. You eat that single bite of orange. But if you were to build the bigger size uh, of that particular peel, then the size is 40 hours. So we could build from four hours up until 40 hours of micro credential module. So in essence. A three credit hour course will require minimum three micro credential module. So that one is the easiest type of submission lah. If you were to build a micro credential course, so what is micro credential? Micro credential are all about learning, reflecting because it's a self-paced self-learn, 
practicing so they practice on their own they need to actually show mastery this is where the instructor check whether they are competent or their learning outcome are actually being achieved and they display their credential and that is the whole journey of where micro credential is all about so i'm going to talk very short one about micro credential versus distance learning eh? because odl and mc are two separate things odl are a whole program so they give you a certificate it's in cohort and it's a full size program eh? MC need to have a source of the cost. Huh? You need to have a source. So micro credential will always need to link to a source. And the source is the cost in accredited program. So in that sense, if we say academic program, uh, if we say uh, MC academic micro credential, uh, if we say MC micro, uh, my, uh, academic micro credential, the source is always from academic program. Huh? So a course micro credential program is unbound into an MC. So if that source change, automatically the MC need to be updated to, 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 to make it in sync. Huh? Because MC is just another mode of delivery for that particular course. So uh, that one is the easy way to, 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 to imagine for academic micro credential. Huh? So the credential uh, form badges, uh, of course, digital credential is personalized, self paced self learn possible to add term if you want, and is bite size. So MC always require a micro uh, academic micro credential will always need to link to a source of course in a program. That is a key. That's why it's accredited. That it needs to be a source, but only for micro, only for MC academic lah. Huh? The non-academic micro credential, uh, I will I will not call it non-academic. I will call it personal, professional, and personal development micro credential or uh, a standalone micro credential, as KPT terms it. Is anything else? Meaning that professional is if you have professional body, you want to create CPT point and so on. Is that personal development? If you have cooking, fishing. Uh, if you know how to do parenting, so those are all micro credential that could actually be come in. Huh? So and then and then imagine imagine a professional, for example, a professional from Coac will be interesting. Huh? Uh, it could be it could be as well professional micro credential that we certify all our apa panggil yang nursery ni yang pengajar apa ni yang jaga nursery ni. It could be as well. Huh? We need to certify all those to make sure that they are they are trained in handling children, handling and learn, handling children, um, young learners. Huh? Could be we could actually have that micro credential as well as a professional or as an academic. It may not academic, but it could be a professional because we are trying to actually propose this to every single nursery. Make sure if you want to take anybody new. They should take micro credential in uh, training young minds. For, for example, I don't know that one is I'm not in the field of education, eh? so probably you are the expert in that one. I'm just giving some ideas out. Huh? So, creator. So why I'm coming here is uh, we are actually talking to the creators. Huh? So the creators are the one who develop the module. Without the creators, the creators that you could see the light bulb there, electricity, the creators are the electricity that lights up that light bulb, the multicolored light bulb. Without the creators, the rest of the ecosystem doesn't exist. The learner doesn't exist, instructor doesn't exist, issuer doesn't exist, as well as users doesn't exist. So that's why we are going hand in hand, every single KCDYM to talk to creators, please build your module. Uh, so this is where we come in as the unit uh, so the, for the creator. So learner who uses the module uh, uh, and then instructor does the activity and then issuers uh, issue the credential and users are the one that use the credential. Uh. So principle of MC is very fast. So this one, I'll just put it very fast one. Uh, outcome based, we already covered all of this. Outcome based, it needs to be personalized. It needs to be assessed anytime uh, online if possible. Tag uh, or one off, and then it needs to be demand driven, transparent, secure, and shareable. So those are the credential of micro credential, uh, micro credential the credential itself. Huh? So when we talk about that, this is where the disruptive innovation is. So we have the Uber, Fiber, Airbnb, and so on. Huh? So the disruptive innovation is already there. So what we are trying to put forward, I hope, huh, especially from Coad, huh, 
we are trying to move into education without boundary, huh? where people could learn from anywhere, people could learn from anybody, uh, and people could learn from all those experts across the globe. Huh? This is where education without boundary is being proposed through MC. So, and we want to be the first mover. Yes, USM is the first mover uh, from MC point of view, but we want to be the first mover where we start to collaborate with different universities across the globe. Huh? We start to collaborate with different NGO across Malaysia, across the globe. We start to collaborate with different, different type of uh, education or providers across, uh, across Malaysia, across the globe to actually develop that education without the boundary, to actually develop that how we could actually get people to credit transfer to our program while we actually acknowledge that some of these programs are equivalent at par uh, with us. This is the part where kuliah need to take part huh? so that we could actually build education without boundary and be the first mover. Huh? Be the first mover as therefore we lead the way as I am. So when we talk about that, then uh, when we talk about create, uh, creators, then I cannot stop but talking about the revenue sharing. This is where uh, there is this is a standard revenue sharing. IUM thirty, MCU fifteen, uh, KCDM uh, ten, M nine lah. Then one percent goes to a liaison officer, and then forty five percent goes to creators. Unless they want to actually have the instructor to manage or MCLO manage, then thirty and fifteen lah. Huh? So that's where we pay the 1% to MCLO as well, huh? For, so that we could actually manage the instructors. Huh? So that one is one. So this is the revenue sharing. Yeah? So, but if you don't want to follow the standard revenue sharing, then a proposal could be made. And it needs to be endorsed, it needs to be approved by micro committee, uh, as well as going into UMC and so on. But this is what has been approved in uh, by UMC, effectively. Yeah? So that is one. And uh, when we talk about revenue sharing, and when we talk about revenue sharing, we link that as well. Micro credential uh, as a unit, we are also trying to help as much on the fee. Yeah? So if you ask me what are the fee, the fee we pass it to the creators. The creators could decide whatever fee they want, provided that we do not cap the fee, yeah? provided that it is less than 5K because 5K is managed by micro credential committee. We actually manage, we could actually approve, we get the, we get the authority from uh, UFC, University, University Finance Committee, to approve any fee which is less than 5K per module. So 5K per module, module meaning that 40 hours uh, per module. So if you say that your module is more than 5K, meaning that 5K per module, then what will happen is we need to actually go through, we need to actually send a proposal to UFC, and then if you actually approve that particular module, then you can actually take, uh, use that fee. Huh? Why we choose 5K is because we feel that 40K, 40 hours is one week, short courses. And then we think about 5K short courses uh, should be reasonable enough. Like if we were to have 5K short courses and 5, uh, 5K micro-credential, meaning that it's a week worth of micro-credential. Huh? Uh, if we do a one-to-one -one mapping, like, so if that thing is more than 5K, then we actually pass to UST Finance Committee so that they have a bigger view saying that, yes, this is really should be above 5K. Huh? Because we feel that 5K is reasonable enough lah, for us to, to approve. Huh? So how the journey looks like? Huh? The journey looks like from initial proposal, and then we go into full proposal, and then we develop content. Huh? So that is the, the cycle that we need to actually go through. Lah. So the initial proposal to catalog is from some initial proposal and then you pitch yeah? you pitch your proposal to MCC members, so market demand and projection, uh, or you present your proposal. So there's two, yeah? pitching is for the pitching is for the personal development. So you do not need personal development, do not need to prepare any document at all except for the pitching slide. For professional and academic, you need to prepare the initial proposal so because that is where we want to actually review huh? the initial proposal and you could do pitching, you need to do presentation as well. Huh? So 90 days, one off, so 130 days for stack and then need to prepare 90 days for one off, 130 days for stack once the initial proposal is approved and then you have uh, six months to prepare your uh, content into platform. Huh? So this is where personalized learning comes in. Lah. 
So what is in the initial proposal? You need to have the demand, you need to have the projection, you need to have the sustainability of it, the learning outcome, the topic, the module outline, that's where the module outline is all about, and the creators, who are your creators? Huh? And the title, the title, we already approved this one. I'll update my slide. I did not update my slide yet. Last time, we used the, the title as micro-credential in something. Somehow, the committee feels that this one doesn't market well. So we will change that. We remove the micro-credential in and just put the title. So like if research methodology, just the title research methodology. We do not actually put in micro-credential in research methodology. So remove the micro-credential in. So just the exact title, mainly for marketing purpose. Lah, huh? So creators, uh, if you win competition, why not become one? So creators could be individual or group. Huh? Uh, individual or group. Entity within UIA or if you are uh, entity within or entity within UIA, meaning that KCDRM, lah, a department and so on. Eh? So if you, uh, if you are competent and have approved, then why not build my one micro-credential? So when we want to send an initial proposal, think about it. If you want to do a pitching or you want to fill out the form, both are the same thing. Think about how much, uh, how much people are willing to pay, who are going to be uh, the target learner, why do you think that one, and how much, how many learners do you think that is. And then how is the projection on the module? And then what are the industry? Is it industry trending now? And then how many learners in five years? Is it evergreen module, like uh, if you have a tafsir? So what are the fees? As I said, maximum 5K from my credential committee approval. But you could go beyond that if you want. Huh? So update, module review, what is the frequency that you, you, that you think is, uh, is good? And then sustainability, how do you think about the promotion, additional learner who are there? And then if there's no learner in a year, how would you propose that you actually done? And so on. Huh? So, and then after that, we submit the full proposal. Full proposal have this basic content. So, uh, the audio need to be 30 minutes, uh, the video 30 minutes, but each video is 10 minutes. And then learning time is say 4 to 40 hours, as I said. And first tag is 160, meaning there's four credit hours. And then uh, uh, there's a content delivery activity learning artifacts, uh, flow, uh, mapping, uh, stack on one-off, uh, and capstone, premiere, and so on. Uh, uh. So we have delivery, so we have either one-off or stack, so we could actually move within that range. Uh. So one off module, or if you stack the one off together, it becomes a stack. And then we have capstone, standard, and premiere. The standard one is actually the standard. This is fully online. Capstone is generally, we are talking about term-based. So this is more towards, if you were to build theory, 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 practical, then it will be a capstone. Huh? So a premiere is a face-to-face -face that we want to convert to standard micro huh? So, and then these are just some of the examples, term, fully online, and then this one equivalent to short courses, and then individual learning artifact. This one is group or individual, and then learning outcome, uh, LO is uh, for the stack or capstone. Lah, huh? So, and then uh, when we want to uh, develop the module online, so learning time needs to be known, assessment, what assessment, what are the activity that you want, what are the learning outcome, what are the content, and what are the delivery. So with that, there are two type MC that I said just now. There are academic. Huh? So this is for accredited model um, a program or standalone, which is professional or inspired for academic, as well as personal interest or community based. That one is personal development. Huh? Personal development. Huh? So and then academic module, as I said, from academic stack, and then credit transfer is done using our current credit transfer policy in SAPER huh? or in PG regulation. Huh? So if you want, you need to identify entry requirement as well. So however, for a professional module, please uh, discuss with professional body or association, just to make sure that uh, we could actually get it in line with professional association requirement. Huh? So I think that is the, 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 the thing that we would actually advise or suggest. Lah. So we have some definitions here. Content is content or module could be break down into smaller sub Start content and then delivery is instructor oriented delivery activity is the learner oriented activity and artifact is anything that we build that the learner build huh? they are in electronic form eh, generally so key ideas we already have that so we have the capstone huh? we have the competency that we are thinking about graded or ungraded and then the weightage need to actually think about and whether it's credential uh, is fully stacked huh? so but I'll cover this one huh? so I'll cover this one for one minute huh? so what happened is 
these are the basic one when we want to build the micro credential. So we have one learning outcome, huh? one learning outcome, and then uh, every learning outcome have a content, and every content have a delivery, and every delivery this is video, audio, or delivery. Nah? If you want to use any other delivery, uh, audio, video, kind of the limit sensors, so audio, video. Uh, if you feel that you want to do kinesthetic, you want to do olfactory, you want to do taste, though, then you may need to actually have slightly a more expensive fee because you may need to post them. Huh? So kalau yang lain tu lah, maknanya kalau yang nak bau, you want to actually ask them to smell, ask them to uh, feel, uh, touch, ask them to taste. So those may need to have delivery. So that thing need to be put in into your cost for your fee lah. If you want to have other than the standard delivery, yeah. So the delivery is generally audio and video in MC. If other, then you need to put it in, lah, uh, as a as a postage, lah. Which is possible because, uh, like, like, um, uh, for us, flagship, flagship, yeah, apa, flagship and jungle school, uh, currently work out dengan Zalifah. We are thinking about probably sending, uh, some of the products to like uh, the parts to, uh, overseas. Inshallah. Uh, so that they could actually build this uh, traditional uh, parts, traditional uh, traditional games, traditional parts. So we may need to send them bamboo. We may need to send them some of our stuff, lah. So the thing about that in terms of delivery, lah. So activities as well as learning artifact, lah. So you have the activities is whatever the activities they want and learning artifact, lah. This is the assessment, lah. Sebenarnya. So if 10 minutes above 10 minutes uh, video, so just break it down into start content so that your video will be 10 minutes 10 minutes huh? so concept if we see there so these are just to summarize the concept 10 minute video and then we have the we have the learning outcome start content and then delivery one minute activity and artifacts huh? Huh? so five, we, we suggest a maximum five artifacts five, five delivery uh, act, uh artifact uh activity or artifact itu je lah huh? jangan buat not not so much so because it may burden the the learners lah huh? so these are these are our suggested type of how many percent on each type of activities lah but it still depends on how you build that's the thing so if you have prerequisite then have the prerequisite identify what are the prerequisite there's a lot of them if you want if there's none there's none lah. so just identify some of the prerequisite and then the learner's learning time. And the learner's learning time key here is instructor, independent, and learning artifact. So I think this is the idea on where we want to have, make sure we know how much the instructor spend, how much the learner spend, and how much they spend on the artifact. Lah. Huh? So when we actually build the learning, the, when we actually build the full proposal later on, the module outcome, the, the module align, as well as the mapping, eh, we're going to move from left to right, eh, from learning outcome, content, uh, what type of uh, oriented method, how long does it take for, for, for them, for you to actually give that, and then the activity, and then what's the time, as well as what are the assessments. So we move that, lah. that's the mapping, how the mapping looks like. And then if you want to have the weightage, think about the weightage and the passing criteria, and then think about the learning time, so you have videos, or assuming the learner view one, so how long is the video, how long is the audio, and so on. Eh? So, so think about that. Eh? If you are sending some parts, think about how long does it take for them to actually view that thing once, and then start to review them. So I think this is another another part. Lah. If you were to actually ship them something. Lah, huh? So two, one, two. Uh, and then estimate time for revision. So teacher-oriented delivery, and then the learner-oriented activities. Yeah. So some reading, and then if you have artifact independently and so on. So those are just lists, and uh, so that we, so that the, the, so that we could actually capture every single artifact and every single proctor. The main reason why this thing is time is because sometimes, yeah, sometimes through system, you may want to have it a proctor exam. So if there is a demand for proctor exam, a proctor exam, then we may need to prepare a proctor exam system, meaning that we may need to lock every single thing, masa dia buat the quiz ke apa ke lah. Huh? So that is the idea lah. Huh? So other than that, think about any other artifacts. I think that is the list that you could actually see, landing page, menu for halal, newspaper article, and so on. So module code, we already updated. Eh? Module code, we already updated based on the MCC proposal. The module code now are exactly uh, the same as our current course code, except we add number at the back and number at the uh, back, uh, number 
uh, before and number after. Itu je lah, just to show that what are the stack number and what are the sequence number. That's it. Huh? But the rest of it are the same. Huh? The same as our course code. So developing content, so a dry run. I would propose dry run. Uh, learning online is different to face-to-face. -to -face, so figure that thing out so that we could actually build a more self-paced, self, -paced, self module. Professional shorts, huh? and then learners are public. And then imagine that you are a learner, is it enough? And then these are the four type of uh, micro-credential modules, huh? micro-credential platforms. So those are the things. So we have Udacity, Skillshare, FutureLearn, Udemy, Edex, Han Academy, Coursera, Masterclass. Those are some of the micro-credential platforms available. If you were to do benchmarking, do visit this one. If you were to do pricing comparison, do visit this one. If you are checking out whether uh, your module is available in other micro-credential platforms, do visit this one. If you feel that uh, whether you have any learner or not, do visit this one. As well as you feel that who are our learner, for example, you want to see who are our learner, then do visit this one. However, how do you find the learner is by checking the comments. Because there are comments there, there are, there are, there are those who are learning there. So see the comments and then some of them will actually learn a link to their Facebook, we learn link to some of their social media. So technically from the that platform, you could study a lot of things because people are sharing a lot of things. So these are part of the internet of behaviors that I said much, much earlier, huh? that we at the unit said much, much earlier. Action plan. So we have another three more minutes before we close, huh? because we can just start study about, about 10 or 5. Huh? So uh, curriculum, instructional design, follow my credential method, so plan. And then we do, so create suitable content for module, so we benchmark and we check, lah, check and do the curriculum and content we do if we need to. Lah. So with that, uh, so we have the batch credential after lifetime, so genuine digital credential and batch. So, so with, with this, I stop. This one is not the stop one. The other two slides is the one that stop, but at least thank you for listening for the past uh, one hour. Uh, I know that because my aim here is to put the why first into every single creator. We want, I want uh, the, the idea for the unit is to put the why, not the how yet. Eh? Because once the why is there, the how it's uh, people figure out the why, the, 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 the how. Eh? Because if the why is not there, however, the how point, I give the whole length step by step the how people will actually not do. Lah, eh? So that's why I want to engage, or the unit want to engage with every single case they are with the why. Why we need to actually build micro credential and why micro credential is here. Eh? So at the end of the day, now thank you for listening. So we have, uh, let's do the initial proposal. Initial proposal is very, very easy nowadays. Yeah? Especially if you want to learn, I really hope that any academics here support uh, admin or uh, technical who are in COAD, if they want to actually learn about how to build MC, submit initial proposal. Saying that we want to submit initial proposal and do the pitching. Yeah? So we're going to have a pitching day as well, bulan 12, eh, hopefully. But if you want to do it earlier, now it would be nice. Yeah? So And then we have full proposal. If you have both together, you want to do full proposal initial. Catalog uh, module content. That one is where we want to do, develop the module content and cataloging, why not? So with that, the last two modules, the last two slides is mastering learning outcome, competency. So we have three prong here. Uh, I'm not the expert here. This one is I say copy paste over the internet. So talking to Coed make me very, very small because I'm Coed like the expert in this particular instructional design. Huh? Huh? So uh, when we talk about instructional, so from my from my from our point of view, it's all about instruction, and then they need to do some practice. So that is where we actually put a lot of activity in the micro credential, huh? and then we need to actually assess their competency, huh? their competency or the learning outcome. That is where the learning artifact is, and once those things are actually being aligned, and we give them the credential, that is where the mastery is. Huh? That is where the mastery is. With that, thank you very much. Tepat-tepat uh, 10-10 minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, that is the end of my briefing, eh, inshallah. And we could have a QA eh, uh, from COET. And I know that COET already submitted uh, one micro credential module on uh, 
uh, research methodology, uh, uh, EDU 7001 is already being approved for initial proposal, already approved for full proposal. Now it's already waiting for developing content. So with that, thank you very much. And I pass back to Koat for Q&A. Lah. So Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and pass back to Koat, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shamsul, uh, for your very clear explanation of my credential. So, uh, do we have any questions here? And, um, oh yeah, Dr. Shakur. Um, yes, I was going to ask what, what credentials do you need to make a micro credentials course? I mean, we have you know, our postgraduate doctorates, but mm -hmm. can somebody on the street do one? Okay, so it, um, it's like this. It depends on what type of uh, credential are you going to actually give. Generally, if you are in the academic, it, there, there are three types of micro-credential that you could give. One is uh, academic micro-credential. That requires, uh, because this is equivalent, this is uh, equivalency to our course in the program. Therefore, uh, it needs to be an academic actually built that, okay? Because it's equivalency. So that, that one is one. Okay. On a professional micro-credential, so that one would be whoever having the professional uh, certificate or so, sort of. So that one is number two. On the personal development, when you ask, that's why I put it into three. On the personal development, Whoever could actually build the micro-credential provided that they could actually show their competency. For example, that's why I put it there. For example, if you win a competition, for example, MasterChef, you win a MasterChef for opening. So, and then just give a micro-credential on cooking. Or if you actually are competent, if somebody actually acknowledge that you are good at something, uh, then give the micro credential. So it's more towards uh, personal development. Micro credential are more lax in a way that anybody feels that they have a good knowledge to share, and they feel that they are competent in that particular knowledge. Then why not share it and get the competence? Uh, give the same competency to others. Right. So, for example, let's say I'm an, I'm a lecturer in education, and I mm -hmm. and I want to I'm interested in Islamic education. Mm -hmm. So, would I have to involve an Islamic education expert in order to develop an Islamic education course? The answer the answer officially is no. I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> officially, the answer is no. All right. Uh, the, officially, the answer is no. However, it is advisable for you to actually get whatever competency required when you want to actually uh, propose the module. For a simple reason, for a simple reason, uh, uh, Prof, for a simple reason, that particular course will be uh, whatever micro credential that we are going to actually. Uh, catalog in will be vetted three times at least, minimum three times. The first one is the approval for initial proposal. We'll be vetted, uh, we'll, be, we'll be approved by micro credential committee. They will already ask, uh, they will already ask, how can I know that you are competent in this? If you say that I have this micro credential, I mean, it could be in such a way that you say that you don't want to engage, uh, you may not want to engage the one from IRKHS, for example, uh, uh, Dr. So, but you said that I already have, uh, I already went to Al Maghrib Institute uh, and I get all these 10 credentials from them and I am competent in all these 10. So then I don't, we don't see any issue lah, because you already went to another micro credential that shows that you are competent in that one. Huh? So it could be that way. You may there's not some be, flexibility you know, there then. Uh, so, so there's a flexibility there. You may not need to, I mean, if I were to say you need to actually have uh, your credential or work out with RHS. No, I mean you already said I've learned through I've learned through this imam, this imam, and they already accredited me. Then it's fine. We do not need to have those, but you need to actually acknowledge that which are the credential. How do we know that you are there? That is one. Okay. Uh, initial proposal, and we have another one for full proposal. That is another review on the curriculum itself. And the last part of it is uh, one, two, and the third gate is on the. 
content itself before we actually uh, uh, put it in catalog. Uh, I put it, uh, the content is in micro credential platform before we list it as a catalog inside the catalog. We will also do another last review, uh, another last review, another last review, uh, another last review where we check the content of the micro credential. So this is where if you say that you are expert in this area, for example, you're expert in this area or whatever, this is where if the micro credential liaison officer committee feels that uh, I think we need to get an expert to review this content. Huh? So we may get expert from IRKHS, we may get expert from e fishing, then we may get expert from some society fishing to review our content to make sure that is this the content acceptable to be uploaded as a catalog? To make sure that there's no liability and so on, so that the information are there. Huh? So there are three gates that review. So at the end, I mean, you could build, but then not necessarily that your module will get approved. That's a that's a that's a thing, lah. Okay, bro. Right, okay. And <laughs> so another point for clarification: you said that the sort of standard amount for one module was five k. Uh, no, 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 no. That you mean the fee itself? I mean. I, I guess the uh, the percentages or the amount that one would receive is that, is that it? Forty five percent, forty five percent. Yes, but you mentioned something about five k. Okay, five k is the one uh, because the module we we pass everybody we pass uh, we give the flexibility to all creators. So, however, uh, we only request uh, from UST University Finance Committee the cap. Of approval from my accreditation committee is at, is at 5k. So meaning that you could, I mean, all creators could build any module until 5k without going to UST Finance Committee. We did without going into UST Finance Committee to approve the fee. So we internally could approve the fee of whatever that you propose. So, but if it is like 5k and one cent, then I we need to actually send to UST Finance Committee, which is checked by I think treasury. Huh? Okay, and was that for the course or was that for the module? For the module. So meaning that, for meaning that you could charge. I mean, put it this way, uh, Doctor, you could charge four hours micro credential five k if you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you say charge, you, you said mean, the person studying it. You mean? Pardon? The person who's learning it. Yes. Yes. You mean? You mean? Yeah. You're the person learning. It, meaning that. The fee for the micro credential could be 5k, meaning that the person who actually wants to learn your micro credential, we need to pay 5k. I see, okay. But whether, I mean, you could actually put the fee at 5k, whether people will actually enroll it or not, it's a different issue. Right? Yes. And then, and then according to your orange, you could yes. have 10, was it 10, 10 modules? Um, no, each module is four hours. So, so 10, yeah, 10 modules would be the maximum for a course, Le Becoran. Uh, no, 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 uh, not 10 modules. Uh, it will be about 30 modules. Because 4 times 3, eh? 120 divided by 4. 120 SLT hours divided okay, by 4. Okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. Uh, so, so maximum that you could build is 30 modules. If you want to be small, small modules. Huh? Okay, I understand. You're the you're the engineer. You're the maths expert here. <laughs> <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> so, but then I would suggest uh, to to start with probably, um, I mean the, the why we put it that one is uh, to make it easy lah. So if you have like three one credit hour course, then probably you could break it down into one credit hour course each. That's the thing. But if you want to make it if you want to make it sellable, uh, then probably four hours each. Why not? Because I don't think people, I don't think uh, public will actually want to learn the whole content for 40 hours. They, might, they want a bite size, just the, the, the specific knowledge that they want. So I think that one will be much more sellable, I would say. And I'm just thinking about the access to this. So anybody can access or they have to enroll, they have to be a UIA student? How's no, that? No, no, no. For, for the micro credential platform, anybody can access, but they need to actually register in the platform. And if they want to enroll, they need to pay certain fee, whatever the creators already set. Lah. And that could be a, a part of your regular course, or is it a standalone? 
Okay, so this is this is where the this is where the the, the clarification. Thank you for asking. Eh? this is where we could actually clarify uh, here. There are two type of modules, and eh? there are two type of uh, uh, module. Eh? I would say one is a academic micro credential, which are sourced from a course in the program. That is one. Now the one is a standalone, which doesn't actually source from anywhere. So it's inspired, yes, but it's not sourced anywhere. So those are the two type of separate module, two, two type of module. So the one which is sourced from a course in a accredited program, will need to actually go into the Senate approval for equivalency, meaning that uh, the proposal needs to be sent to my accreditation committee, and then the committee approve, and then the Senate will endorse that the cost, uh, the micro credential, and the cost uh, in the program is equivalent, is equivalency. So meaning that student have a choice. Our student, our student, or other students, uh, those non matriculated students have a choice. If the kuliah wants it uh, to actually either enroll in a face to face uh, face to face uh, journey or through micro credential, so they have a choice uh, if, if if the kuliah allows. Uh, the kuliah could allow. Uh, our student, uh, now you enroll through MC, now you enroll to that if you want to allow them. Or another scenario is, another scenario is, you already have that particular micro credential academic course. Eh? So what happened, uh, academic stack of modules, eh? I, I won't call it course, academic stack of modules, uh, micro credential modules. So what happened is the student takes stack, uh, module number one, two, three, which is equivalent, the whole stack is equivalent to the course in COAC. What will happen is if they actually took it before they matriculated, for example, before they matriculated, what will happen is they could actually do a credit transfer to the program related once they matriculated, if they want to, and if the kuliah approves it. So two things. One, if they want to. Another one is if the kuliah approves. So those two. So that one is we cover the academic part. And then when we talk about the personal development and the professional one, that one doesn't uh, correlate with the academic micro credential. Therefore, uh, you could build anything. Lah, sebenarnya. You could build anything, any modules and so on. So, but this particular uh, credit, this particular module also, uh, the learners could actually combine, 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 and request for credit transfer if they want to. Uh, and if the kuliah approved. Uh, so those are all depending on the kulia and depending on the individual. Huh? It could get a bit complicated, couldn't it? Yes, I do agree. But we all we, we pass it all to the kulia to decide uh, whether I mean at the end of the day, it's all uh, at the end of the day we pass to the kulia uh, the amat uh, amat CPS and CFS are currently preparing an SOP on how the enrollment should be lah. Huh? So, but we pass it to kuliah for credit transfer purposes, enrollment, and so on lah. So, but Ahmad, uh, Ahmad CPS and CFS are currently preparing a, a a standard operating procedure on how this could be done. Inshallah. Okay, thanks. Okay. And yes, it is a bit complicated. That's why SOP is required. <laughs> Any other questions from anyone else? Uh, yes. Assalamualaikum. Yes, um, may I ask? Yes, Prof. Okay, I did the show. So, um, okay, can we develop uh, the MC, MC uh, uh, module from, let's say, our fra flagship project or mm -hmm. our grant? Mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah, all. The answer is yes. <laughs> okay. The answer is yes. <laughs> All right, thanks. And we should, right, Dr. Chamsun? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should. I mean, now, now, okay, just to answer, now, now there are plans for two flagship micro credentials. One is gender dysphoria. Huh? Now, the one is uh, gender dysphoria from Kuantan by Prof. Chamsun. And now the one is Jungle School by Dr. Zalifa from. Uh, from I mean, Dr. Zalifa from Jungle School. <laughs> those two are do those two flagship. They are planning to be my credential. Dr. Shamsul, uh, yes. Is it 
a good advice if I were to say, you know, like if everyone of us think of what is our niche or what are we good at and mm -hmm. try to come up with a, for at least the four hour micro credential course. And if you want to do like uh, young, young free courses too, it's just a just module, right? Yeah, but don't. Not charge uh, the students. So what I'll, what, I'll, what I'll suggest is you could see this one, huh? That, can you see the screen now? Yes. Okay. So what I suggest is uh, this is a new procedure. This is a new procedure. So for, for everybody, every creators, uh, I mean, uh, because individual creators, that feels that they want to start to do the micro-credential. Uh, so what I would suggest is to actually do this, meaning that uh, think about what are the topics that you want to share. Uh, think about the topic that you want to share. Think about some of the basic questions below. So who is interested in what, what we want to share? How much you plan to charge them? Or what are the fee that you want to give? Uh, how many people you think would be interested? Uh, what do you plan? Uh, what do you plan to share with them? I.e., the things that they will learn. Uh, what is the title of the micro credential and the general topic that you plan to cover? Think about that, and then just download this form A2. Eh? So say by give very simple. Eh? Ini untuk personal development dah excessively simple. Download the form A2. Eh? Meaning that just this form, form yang ni je. Say by give personal development. Eh? Yeah, lain tu memang still because we need to actually capture. A lot of things to actually understand. Eh? Just download this form. Eh? So form ni cuma tanya, uh, have you uh, online uh, own pitch deck, allocator, presentation time, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, q &A. Visit this website, guide on what should be pitch deck. And then other document if you want. Eh? If you if, if you want, other document if you have any. Eh? If you have any, kalau ada. So number document, check. Submit name, KCDM, whether what's the stack title detail, and that's it. That's the that's the end of your that that is the only detail that we need from the creators nowadays. And then once you fill up the form, develop your own pitch that presentation material, 10 minute allocated, eh? and then submit the in the e-form provider. The e-form are so simple, eh? so simple that I could I'll show you this e-form in the uh, independent learning. Eh? So it's so simple that you just need to answer your email. What is your name? Which KCDIM you are in? Just choose the drop down menu. This is a new proposal. Just click a new proposal. Uh, since if it is being reviewed, review. If no, no. And then which micro credential committee, which micro credential meeting you are planning, yeah? which, you are, which you are planning. So if it's October there, and then go to next. And then just type the, type the one off there. Yeah? So the previous one, eh, you have this, all this thing you already answered. So just go to the next one. Type the title that you want. And then go into your, because if you are to do academic micro-credential, then it will be different. You need to fill up cover page in the initial proposal, initial proposal form, and initial proposal presentation. However, we simplify for a personal development in such a way that you just need to submit these two. Uh, initial proposal cover page just now, the one that you feel, the, the, one, the one that I, I showed you just now, cover page for initial proposal, the one that only just uh, about two minutes fill up, and the rest is your pitch deck presentation. So this is up to you, however you want to develop your pitch deck. Huh? So this thing can be in English or Malay if you want. Huh? So and then click submit, and that's it. That's the end of your initial proposal submission. So the only thing now is Think about this question because you need to actually think about this question and put it in your pitch deck lah. Itu je lah, sebenarnya. Huh? Because you need to do a pitching lah. Why and so on and so on. Those are the only thing initial proposal. Huh? So and then when we do the full proposal or the final proposal, huh? that is where we're gonna have the tutorial on filling up the form, initial proposal, filling up the form, uh, module online, filling up the form, level mapping, filling up the form. Uh, content development and so on. Because we're going to have a weekly tutorial on that. Man, it's scheduled in. So I'll put it in the micro credential punya website. There is a schedule for tutorial to fill up every single forms that we have. Uh, just to help every single creators. Uh, okay. okay. So that one is that one. Is one. Any question? Ada soalan lagi? Do we have any other questions? So, but if you want to see who, which one yang dah approve this one lah. So, saya nak tunjuk lah ada satu daripada Kuat. Huh? 
So status proposal. So those are the ones already approved by research methodology already approved last meeting 21 September. So full, full proposal approved stack. Uh, this one stack number two lah. So the title approved is this one lah. Huh? Saya tak remove lagi micro-credential E ni, tapi the title ini lah, Research Federally, Research and Education. So, these are from COEL lah, three ni, EDU 720. These are all academic module lah, EDU 7001. Dr. Syamsul, actually for the IMAT, we have three stacks now. I did explain uh, the IMAT. Satu, three module, bukan three stack. Yeah. Oh, sorry, three modules, yes. Ah, betul. That's one, tu ada satu, dua, tiga. Oh, okay. Yeah, doktor boleh tanya tak satu doktor? Ke dah tunjuk tadi? Saya masuk lewat tadi. Yang mana tak faham? Uh, tunjukkan satu structure of the micro credential. You want to get some idea. Structure maknanya tak faham? Uh, component of the micro credential tu. Component. Uh, Dr. Haniza, uh, like I've mentioned tadi, uh, after this session, for those who are willing to stay, I will show example of what Udemy uh, has offered as their micro credential courses. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I don't want to take Dr. Shamsul's time in case he needs to end. Okay. 11.30. Okay. Uh, so do we have any other questions from anyone else? No? Okay. Um, so otherwise, um, I think... Uh, uh, Sorry lah. Dengan micro credential, I have so many questions. Tapi I just want to have one very quick question. So okay, I okay, tak apa, boleh, macam, uh, macam uh, it is like one course thing you boleh develop kan. So uh -huh. uh, and okay, this one is another thing. I sorry lah, I baca juga juga punya tu. Tapi maybe I want a quick answer. <laughs> so uh, okay. kata, uh, kata kalau kita dah ada target group kita work with uh, satu kumpulan, uh, kumpulan target group yang mungkin akan Uh, dia apa akan join kita kan mm -hmm. uh, ke, kita kena ada target group kita sendiri ke ataupun kita boleh offer aja to anyone macam mana dia ada tu if you as, as i said this one uh, same thing lah like that your your case is the same as we work with uh, apa ni imat as well as dengan apa lembaga hasil lah lembaga hasil so what happen is If we have a target group, for example, very specific, very niche, for example, excessively niche punya type of memang khas untuk dia, mm -hmm. we could actually build a collaborative type of micro-credential, meaning that that one is for them and for them alone and forever with them lah. Itu satu. Okay. If, however, if they agree kata to open up the same micro-credential to public, so maknanya kita boleh ada for them and for public, tapi kita control lah enrollment for them. Itu je. Okay, alright. Orang-orang tak pernah tanya, tanya yang lain dengan doktor. <laughs> Sorry lah, I I'm very interested but I don't know how to start and I don't know how to begin. Um, it's not going to take that uh, long kan, the process of doing this? Uh, okay, the process of doing this uh, will take some time. Kita ada banyak, ada the, 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 the initial proposal, full proposal, lepas tu at the end of it is your content. I think the bulk of the work is the content development sebenarnya. That's why If you realize uh, the way we develop ni masuk yang lain ya. Eh? The initial proposal we could simplify and now even personal development kita dah simplify. But the full proposal tu nanti full proposal memang take some time. That's why we give 90 days to 120 days, three to three to four months to think about because you need to think about your instructional design, need to think about what the activity, what the assessment dan sebagainya. So so quite a lot of thinking. So and then three to six months and then we give you six months. Uh, three to four months untuk nak develop the curriculum, six months to develop the content. So you can imagine where the bulk of the time is lah. <laughs> huh? But if you, you if you if you could do it faster, then boleh je. How is the development the IT punya ni kita dapat support from anyone tak? That one currently currently sebenarnya kita tengah work out dengan Our, apa, saya tengah buka dengan Mijat untuk nak dapatkan intern on a continuous basis. So that would be part of the support yang kita try boleh buat lah. Tapi as uh, as USM, UKM, UPM buat, the the only way to make the micro credential to be sustainable, to be sustainable and to make sure that the micro credential could actually work well, is to have the creators to have the skill. Because nanti bila nak update nak update katakanlah ada pertukaran, pertukaran ada pertukaran dari segi curriculum kita. 
the creators need to be able to update the curriculum fast enough to cater to the market. So maknanya part of the skill that the creators need to develop termasuklah all the editing and everything lah. But support untuk nak belajar semua we will start to to to, to actually get lah. Itu for sure insyaAllah. Ada workshop ya? Eh? Ah, workshop insyaAllah semua. Kita akan, kita akan start to to arrange workshop. Kita we also plan to have micro credential for micro credential sebenarnya. Ah, good, good. Micro credential to be micro credential. So memang akan tengah ada dalam planning. So, but even that, the micro credential creator yang nak build the micro credential for micro credential may take some time lah. Sebabkan yang ni kita tengah work dengan OCAP. Dengan kita punya apa ni, corporate, 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 corporate com lah. InsyaAllah. Okay. Um, anyone else would like to ask anything? Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, and, uh, yes, Prof. <laughs> sustainability. I think for co-ed, insyaAllah, uh, Dr. Nazatul and the IMED team has gone through the experience of doing. So if there is any uh, member of the kuliah who wants to proceed, we are happy to assist. But my question to uh, the MC unit is uh, when you mentioned about sustainability just now. Betul. There is no, is, is there a, a requirement, for example, for us to, in the proposal, in the, at the pitching stage or before, uh, for something like an analysis on marketability of the... Ada, tu ada dalam, yang, yang, yang itu kalau untuk akademik, memang akademik dengan apa ni memang ada. That's why, that's why we, that's why dalam yang uh, presentation, kalau perasaan yang Prof. Sahari kena hantar and yang apa ni dalam form tu they ask about sustainability they ask about all those things but untuk personal development uh, we are trying to actually make it kalau untuk professional and academic memang we ask about all the sustainability how long and all those things lah because we want to make it long term huh? so that one is one so memang ada dalam form tu if you check the form all the question ada the one that is inside the briefing are all in the form so those are all the question that needs to be answered lah huh? And the micro credential committee are also asking that question. Huh? However, on the personal development, because we see that that thing is uh, how do you call it, faster growing and faster changing. So we are trying to to see on uh, at least the pitching start, the pitching stage to try to get the at least some idea moving. And then after that, master the full proposal too, they still need to figure out the sustainability and so on lah. And so, so sama aja sebenarnya. Tapi on a later stage lah, masa nak submit full proposal. Tapi sustainability definitely need to be understood, identify master full proposal need to actually figure out what are uh, how do we make sure that if there's no learner within a year, what are the activity or what are the action that we could take, we could take and so on lah. Those two needs to be at the top process earlier on lah. You say. Okay, thank you. So what form uh, that sustainability uh, justification doesn't matter. Eh? Ah, tak apa, tak apa. Itu that doesn't matter. No, no, not really. The, the idea, <coughs> dia macam ni. The idea, Prof, is not as much as we want the detail to be out. The justification, the, 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 the spirit behind is the creators need to start thinking about it. Itu je sebenarnya. And we, that, that's where the probing question is. Because yeah. kalau kalau kita tak probe, tu, nanti the creator never thought about it. Nanti at the end, nanti lepas tahun tak ada tak ada learner and we ask oh, saya tak terfikir lah uh, why like, I spend all this man hours like three months that I don't get any learner and I do not know where to move forward so at least masa start tu kita dah probe lah saya tak adalah fresh nanti we we, de, we never thought of the second third fourth uh, sustainability part of the module alright thank you okay okay um okay so kalau tak ada soalan lagi um, after this i will uh, show you the example from the udemy and also what uh, i might have submitted okay at least the others can have an idea okay uh to shamsho your one last advice to all of us from coed okay so my last one advice is uh, i would propose semua sekali at least i mean micro credential is new huh? micro credential is new so my my last advice is just go through it with a leap of faith. I hope everybody could join in. Uh, 
do uh, personal development for our thing about personal development four hours and then just submit for for pitching i think the most that you're going to spend is probably half a day figuring out what it is so and that's it and there's no form to fill so everything that you want to actually do is purely the apa, the presentation that you plan zero form for personal development so maknanya is a we have made it very very easy for everybody to submit personal development module so i mean if you have ideas now you could submit within the next half a day and you could submit more one already that is my advice like at least to go through the process because okay. once you submit then, then there's a there's a different process to flow lah but at least get that ball rolling so that we said that we want to do that i think mean, the, the 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 point that i put it here is take the first step and take the first action that's it <laughs> or if we don't want to do it individually maybe we can get some lecture ah yes if we if don't want to do it individually that group of three or four or five if you don't want to do it individually you can do it at the department level kan ah so boleh cuma ah bring the department if you want <laughs> yeah macam aku eh has started with imap right so maybe after this other four departments can start uh, thinking about what we can offer to the public in terms of market potential uh, program kan betul I mean, think about it because I think the, the 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 my personal view when I talk to a lot of creators, the biggest hurdle is the starting point. Yes, manya, ah, itu je. Once they start to get the hang of it, they start to see the form. Why, why, why is there? Why do all these questions are asked? Then people understood the the, the importance of all the question. But Kuno once it's done, apa awal awal tu macam terkejut sikit lah. Tapi tu sampai once it's done, approved huh? and in the platform. The market is all over the world, right? It's not just yeah, betul, the betul, betul, betul. Ah, so, so, so one thing is uh, when we talk about the 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 the, the way we are trying to do uh, is the way the 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 way we are trying to promote is the one that that this one. I uh, probably I close this one lah. Uh. Uh, the way the way we want to promote is we are going to do a lot of content marketing yeah content marketing meaning that we're going to do a lot of content marketing in the platform itself if you realize the micro credential the idm that you do the my have a blog huh? so we expect yeah we expect or we hope yeah so every single creator will create minimum one blog inside the platform so meaning that uh, we're going to give uh, access to every creators yeah every creators minimum one blog per day so contohnya how we happen is because i think now we people around the globe consume a lot of content ah contoh ya i think everybody everybody agrees that ah consume a lot of content so rather than for example we we say that we have this module what we happen is i would propose to everybody this is what we are going we we planning to do is every single creator ah every single creator create one content ah create one content saying that seven tips for a good parenting so adalah tujuh tip apa-apalah you nak buat eh seven tips for good parenting and you say that for more in depth uh in depth on parenting tips or in depth parenting knowledge and for you to get credential in parenting how about visit our module blah kat situ so we do indirect marketing meaning that from that content we promote micro credential from that content we promote micro credential So the more content that we have, the more micro credential that we could promote. Itu just nanya. So seven tips for parenting, how to make children behave, how to actually make student learn, how to, so all those content, the basic basic content yang probably takes you about a half a day or one hour, two hours. Those to actually link to your paid micro credential. That is how we are planning to do. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Jamshul. Uh, no problem. You are welcome if you want to stay, uh, but otherwise, if you have something to do, we don't want to take your time. Thank you so much for your explanation, very clear. Um, I guess uh, the way you kept up with semangat, we all are what? <laughs> Even though we have a lot <laughs> to do, but hopefully, inshallah. Okay. Uh, I will not end with tasbih kifarah yet because I want to show them. If you don't mind, can I? Okay, no problem. Okay, so with that, probably I'll just leave the meeting. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. So you. Assalamualaikum to everybody. So thank you very much and hope to see everybody around, inshallah, with the with the micro-credential module. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll share my screen now. Uh, but for those who have something to do, if you need to go, 
boleh ya. Um, I want to start with uh, this ah, uh, ya. Because once uh, I was sorry when I was appointed as the micro credential uh, liaison officer, then I started to read more and Google more about uh, micro credential. And I got to know that uh, one good example is uh, from Udemy. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, the one that I subscribe from uh, Udemy. Okay. Uh, the the price was uh, about hundred plus dollars actually, but during the sale <laughs> sale period, I suppose they are selling all the I don't know um, to get a. Uh, uh, what consistent market agaknya they have uh, this sale so i bought it for less than 30 dollars actually okay so this is one example how to show it. so basically we will have uh, for every uh, uh, you can have macam dr shamsu cakap tadi you, you can have a one off uh, minimum of 4 hour lesson okay but 4 hours uh, 4 hour lesson must consist of videos not more than 10 minutes okay for example this is uh, this is the 34th video in this whole uh, program. The one I subscribe, uh, the title is Neuroscience for Personal Development. Okay, so for each um, session, if you can see here, okay, the video will not take more than 10 uh, minutes. So sometimes it's eight, sometimes it's six, three. Okay, so maybe I can play this uh, to show you an example. Just for a birth. Our brain contains 100 billion of neurons, and each of these has 100,000 connections. Only three months later, there's only some 10,000 left. What happens during those first vital months is that, depending on the environment we're in... So we can actually use the slides and add in the voice for our video. Okay. Um, sometimes uh, we don't need to create a new video. Okay. We can actually give them the link, okay, provided that the link... Uh, According to Dr. Shamsul, you can even have uh, links from the YouTube, okay? Uh, provided that it is less than 10 minutes, okay? So you can have, uh, for example, here there are many sections, okay? For each section, for example, for introduction, they have three, okay? You can have, uh, you can also attach uh, uh, a document here, okay? For example, if I can share this, okay? Um, you can have inform, uh, but the content must be in the form of audio or video. Okay, and here is uh, uh, they are giving you a link. Okay, or maybe um, attach document for you to read. Okay, and at the end of the, for example, this is uh, for session hypothesis. Yeah. Everything you will see in this course is based on. Okay, for Udemy, maybe I can show you what uh, other online courses that they are offering, okay? Here, if you go to the Udemy website, um, categories here, yeah. Okay, there are many categories for us to choose from. Let's say we take teaching in academy. Okay, they will give you the list of uh, micro-credential courses that they are offering. So I suppose with the sale, it's a good uh, bargain for us. Okay, for example, the actual price can be more than hundred dollars, and now it only become less than twenty. Okay, so something affordable. So, so this is the one that. Uh, sorry. So you can uh, look at there are many different categories here. Okay, like Dr. Shamsul mentioned just now, it can be. Uh, personal development, professional development, or academic step. Okay. Uh, any question about this example? So, uh, yeah, when, when they recorded that video, I wonder how they got the background. Again? I say, if we could just see that video again, it, it's oh. more than just the background. It seems more, more sophisticated. Could we just play it again? Okay. Scientific research. If you're interested in the scientific references, feel free to have a look at the added materials of this lecture. Right, so it's like a kind of animation, isn't it, behind him? I'm not yeah. sure. 
Can anyone teach us how to do that, or we, how do we do that? Um, I don't know. Maybe, uh, can we at, at our kulia? I suppose maybe we can get the help of uh, Dr. Fatima to advise us, or maybe micro credentials do need uh, themselves. We have their own experts to help us. Um, I will ask uh, Dr. Shamsu for that. Yes, because I mean, talking with a PowerPoint is not as interesting as what he's doing with that with the animation or that film behind him, right? Yes, and sometimes it can even be in the form of uh, two people having a dialogue. Okay, but throughout the dialogue, you get the message or the content of the that particular session. Okay, so right. So uh, we have a we have a bit to learn about how to create uh, content, I suppose. That's what Dr. Shamsu mentioned just now. Um, it will take some time for us to produce this, to get everything ready in the platform, right? That's why we are given, if I'm not mistaken, six months. Because we have to get everything ready, at least the whole stack. If we have, um, sorry, if we have like, say, three modules, we must get the three module or at least one module ready, okay, with all the videos. Okay, with that, I want to show the slides um, prepared by uh, IMAT, okay, just to give you an idea what is to be submitted. Can you see the slide? Yes. Okay. They have uh, given us the template okay, for you to fill in. So you just need to uh, inform them. This slide will be used during your presentation okay, uh, in the micro-credential uh, proposal meeting. Okay. So we just need to explain. Okay. This one is uh, hit by Prof. Sahari okay, because uh, they have the request from uh, GAPIM Association of Muslim Teachers. Okay, to train their teachers in terms of assessment. Okay, so instead of giving them an online uh, lesson, um, Prof. Hari and his team has turned this into a will turn this into a micro credential uh, program. Okay, so we just need to explain the market, um, our targeted learners. Okay, and the projection. Okay. Okay, and explain a bit about each module. Okay, for your information, IMAT has come up with um, uh, EDU 7001 research methodology, which have been divided into three modules. Okay, module one, module two, and module three. And then you just have to briefly explain to them the content of each module. Okay, uh, and also your projection, uh, your timeline. When do you think it can be ready? Okay. Uh, another thing that I met has submitted is the. This is the example of the form that we have to fill in. Okay, explaining in detail the about the uh, the the cost, the micro credential cost. Basically, I met has uh, just uh, changed uh, the what do you call this? The cost outline. Okay, which we have. Okay, and just break it into small classes. Okay. This is one example. Okay, you, we have to do a bit of calculation. If it's a um, academic stack, okay, like Dr. Shamsu mentioned tadi, you must have at least 40 hours for each module. Okay, so those 40 hours, okay, um, this is an example of uh, the first uh, video will consist of 10 minutes, a 10 minute video. Okay, and then we will assume that the student will watch this twice. Okay, so that would be 20 minutes. And then uh, after the video, they are going to have a discussion online. Okay, um, we will prepare the, what they call the platform in the micro credential uh, platform lah, for them to have discussion okay, with the lecturers or with other students. Okay, if it's, a, uh, let's say you have a group of students taking this subject together. Okay, and then, um, for every content, you must decide on one activity, okay, or one artifact, okay. Um, in this example, the first two videos, they are just required to watch the video and do the discussion and read the articles, okay. But for the third video, after they have watched the third video, which should be less than 10 minutes, they are going to do this artifact, Reflection Journal. They have to submit this. So for this first module of research methodology, they are required to submit a reflection journal, infographics, essay writing, and to do a test. 
Okay, in order to get uh, what we call the batch, uh, to show that they have completed module one. Okay, and once uh, they have achieved this, then they have like uh, just now Dr. Shamto mentioned, can, uh, if they have to watch the video, you can see how many times did they actually watch the video. Okay, because they will do everything in the micro ILUM micro credential platform. Okay. So this is for module two. And then the last one is module three. So you have to total up everything, make sure it is uh, 120 uh, hours, credit hours. If it's an academic stack, you have to map the, you, you have to align the content with the course outline. The one that we have uh, in the Kulia. And yeah. I hope uh, the example has given you some idea. Any question? Should I stop this? Doctor, will you share this with us in the email? Yeah, I suppose I can, inshallah. The example of the module, right? The, the cost mapping. Tadi, dengan the slides. Yeah. Okay, inshallah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, it's almost 12. Uh, any questions? I am still new with this micro credential, so you have to bear with me. Okay, but whatever questions you have, if, you, I, if I cannot answer, I will definitely refer to uh, Dr. Shamsul and the team to get more details and get back to you. Okay? Thank you very much. Okay, so can we end the session? If there's uh, nothing else, no question, eh? inshallah. But you can always ask me the WhatsApp or the email, okay? So let's end our session. Dr. Muhammad, you want to ask anything? Thank you. No, that's all. Thank you. I do appreciate your Thank you. Okay, so let's end our session today with Tasbih Kipara. Okay, as well as us. Thank you, Dr. Nazar, for your initiative. Assalamu alaikum. And keep safe. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Okay, assalamu alaikum. I have signed in the attendance. Shall I end this?